Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus again today. I am Trace and I'm here with my friend Craig, who you may recognize from Wheezy Waiter or The Good Stuff or Mental Floss or Crash Course. I have a lot of clones. He has a lot of clones, which is why we invited him today to talk a bit about the ethics of cloning. Thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for having me. Of course. This is Test Tube Plus. What we do. You have you have me on. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, that's what we do now today. Okay. okay. So earlier, uh, we talked a bit about cloning and things like agriculture. It's been done for a long time. We've also cloned uh, things in the lab. We've done natural cloning. We've talked about all of that stuff already. So the director of Santa Clara University's Institute of Agribusiness, the largest agribusiness MBA program in the country, named Professor Andrew Starbird, Mm -hmm. awesome name, says, quote, cloning presents tremendous potential, and that, quote, cloning animals would allow us to replicate desirable traits to create bioreactors that would produce whatever we want. And this wouldn't be true just for traditional food products, but gene therapy could also be used to induce goats to produce insulin in their milk, which would eventually prevent the need to create artificial insulin for humans. So my question to you, Craig, is when it comes to cloning of farm animals, a lot of people have, like, I don't know, qualms? Hang-ups. Yeah, yeah. hang-ups. I don't know about you. I would definitely eat a cloned cow. I would eat, if it's delicious, I'll eat it. Okay. Pretty much. You don't have any qualms or, or anything about, you know, cloned meats? How do you feel about it? I think it's fine. I yeah. think, I mean, I don't see it as any more ethically, uh, ethically disturbing than just eating animals, just well, yeah. in general, you know? Okay. If you have a problem with eating cloned animals, you probably would have a problem eating animals, don't you think? Just in I general? would think so. I mean, yeah. technically, when we breed animals, we're kind of naturally, you know, doing the same thing. Yeah. When we clone them, we're taking this genetics and we're just artificially kind of inseminating, right? Yeah. So if you do that with animal husbandry and you're forcing this animal to mate with that animal to produce our offspring that we then eat, mm -hmm. I feel um, like it's almost... It's like the same. Right, it's almost more ethical to say we're gonna just take some of your eggs and we're yeah. gonna go and produce. You don't have to. You, you don't know, have to. That other do cow that over other there. Stuff. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You can do that on your own time. That's right. fine. Yeah, we don't necessarily. Well, need that's none of our business. Yes. we'll just clone you. Right, we'll just uh, clone you. Yeah, and then we eat. It seems more more ethical even. Right, to me. somehow. Some, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and there are several different ways that uh, cloning or similar practices are beneficial to. Uh, agribusiness, obviously, it's cheaper to just be able to clone animals and things. But there are other things that, that can benefit us all. Disease resistance is one. Mm -hmm. uh, climate sustainability is another. You know, we could clone an animal and modify its genetics to, I don't know, produce less methane, mm -hmm. which seems good. I mean, maybe we're, we're oversimplifying a little bit. It does seem good, but I guess people could use that for bad things. Yeah, true. Uh, if we allow allow people to just genetically modify an animal however they want to, I mean, so far it seems fine. I mean, if if you can if you can improve upon it and reduce methane, put is insulin in goat's milk, that sound that seems great. But it's like Jurassic Park, you know, like maybe we're 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 playing God. Yeah. And, Maybe there's some unforeseen consequence I'm not thinking about, but... Yeah, and that's kind of how I feel about it, too. I think it, this is such a new field, right? This is such a new thing. And as we mentioned earlier, there's no actual legal uh, barriers to a lot of these things because no one's ever done them before. Mm -hmm. So if you were to somehow breed an animal that was... maybe get, got sick less, mm -hmm. I can't see a necessarily a huge downside in that because right now we're putting massive amounts of antibiotics into our animals. Mm -hmm. Those antibiotics contribute to antibiotic resistant bacteria. And then we have to worry about that because they can infect us and those animals. Mm -hmm. So if we clone a animal that has a really good immune system and doesn't need as much antibiotics, is that not and better? Yeah, I think it might be. It seems like it also, it's not much different than what we already do. Like yeah. uh, dogs, we've we've breeded dogs to our liking for hundred I don't know hundreds of years. Yeah, um, I have a dog named Mitzi. Oh, she's a she's a Shih Tzu, and, and those breeds traditionally have breathing problems with their mm. nose, mm -hmm. and they've been bred that way. We've we bred those we bred dogs to become the way they are, and the consequence was she she lives with a terrible breathing problem. Right. So consequences like that might might arise, but we're already doing it. Right. So. Yeah, that's actually a great point. There's also uh, things like endangered animals, you know. Uh -huh. So when it, when it comes to cloning endangered animals, I feel awesome about that. 
Like, oh, oh this yeah. animal, there's only, you know, four or five of this species left. Mm -hmm. If we can clone 10 or 12 of them, they don't quite have a breeding population yet, but at least we've got more and more. And then we can try and find genetic diversity by, you know, bringing in similar species and you know, cousins and things and working with their genetics. Yeah, I mean, that sounds good. That seems good on the surface. Yeah. But then the, the possible consequence is uh, introducing into the current ecosystem, introducing a new animal mm. and the problem with that. I remember taking a trip to Maui mm. and they talked constantly about introducing new things into the island because, yeah. because there's such a contained ecosystem. They needed, they, they were trying to control it. And uh, there was, they had like a, a rat problem or something. Mm. So they introduced another animal of some kind. Like a mongoose or no, that would be snake problem. Yeah, they, yeah. Maybe they introduced a snake. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it might have been, something like that. They introduced an animal to get rid of the rats, but it turns out that the animal, one of them went to sleep during the day, one of them went to sleep at night. So they oh, just no. had a lot of both. Oh, <laughs> but we, we're pretty bad at managing environments. Yes. So, but if we if we suddenly bring back a bunch of dodo birds mm. or something, where are they going to live? Yeah, and how will that affect what where everyone? What, what everyone else is doing that is living there. Right. And I like they bring up the dodo because that's not endangered. It's already extinct, right? And yeah. There's been talk of bringing back extinct animals. Example, yeah. uh, we've talked about in another episode of Test Tube Plus, um, the mammoth, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's like, oh, we could have a woolly mammoth. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to put it? <laughs> yeah, they're big. They're Mammoth, th mammoths are mammoth. I mean, you use the word mammoth now to indicate bigness. That's right. And it's a giant fuzzy elephant, right? Yeah. So it needs a lot of space. Where are you going to put it? So that's that's some of like the borderline where it can get dangerous. But we, you can also talk about bringing back extinct animals that maybe help an ecosystem. You know, apex mm. predators are often killed at high rates, and then they don't get replenished as easily because evolution has made it so they don't breed as often, and they breed fewer pups or you know sh I'm thinking sharks or, or wolves and things. Mm. So it might be nice to clone endangered animals in different areas and be able to repopulate. You wouldn't have to you know wait for the natural process. You could say, oh well. Mm -hmm. Let's clone a variety of the wolf or the shark and, and put them all back. Yeah. And we have, we have a healthy ecosystem again. You know, I feel like that would be pretty good as well. I, yeah, it seems nice. Um, but are we too powerful? That's a, that's, that is the problem, mm -hmm. you know, is, is, and, and we'll get into that more kind of tomorrow. But okay. like, there's also like, um, you can clone mice, which we mm -hmm. do all the time. You know, we mm -hmm. use cloned mice in scientific research. Mm -hmm. And as much as people get kind of, kind of about using mice in this way it's it's you can't use humans in this way so you got to test it somewhere and as sad as that is mm. and often the animal models are genetically engineered to mimic human diseases so that we can better test on them and it usually takes a long time to create one of these animals so they do that more traditionally and then once you have them you can clone all of that one. So say mm -hmm. you wanted to test a Parkinson's drug using stem cells, like we were talking about earlier, you'd need a mice that, like colony that has Parkinson's to test yeah. it on. And that, you'd have to give them Parkinson's somehow yeah. and then clone them so they all have Parkinson's. I mean, it, it's great for humanity. Yeah. Not so great for the mice. Right. Uh, I personally, I mean, ethically, it's very much a gray area. Right. I would, I would, uh, I would err on the side of humanity. Yeah. Personally. Well, you are a human. So I am a human. You're biased. That's right. But imagine like, I could imagine a sci-fi story where humans are being cloned on an alien planet mm -hmm. for the aliens. To, to test their diseases yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine mm -hmm. you, your dad tells you that he's actually a clone of you and that you're just, just being raised for disease research. That sounds like a good sci-fi story. It does, doesn't definitely it? write that it's down. It's probably been written, but... But maybe. Then uh, one of our producers and I, we were talking about genetically cloning great people from Earth's history. Mm -hmm. For example, what if we cloned Einstein? Yeah. He's super smart. That's true. But then, you know, the obvious is, well, then you could clone Hitler as well, you know? <laughs> that would be bad. Yeah, if we had the, that ability and people were just cloning historical figures left and right, someone's going to bound to to do that, Yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I think... This mode of thinking for me is like it's already with us. It doesn't even matter. It's not just cloning. It's everything. Any tech new technology is going to have its downsides. Mm. 
So we can either just say no to any sort of progress or just, you know, try to use our powers for good. Yeah. And I'm on the side of trying to use our powers for good. Let's clone Einstein. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Although, my, my thought is, just because you clone something doesn't necessarily mean that you have the, like, you clone Einstein, what you have is a tiny human baby mm -hmm. that then has to grow up. Right. And just because Einstein grew up to be a mathematical genius, you know, mm -hmm. person, yeah. doesn't mean that that baby is going to grow Nature up Nature versus way. nurture. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're, yes, we're producing a genetic copy of that person. Mm -hmm. But if you clone me, you don't necessarily get me next time, you know, because yeah. you have to grow them up. Which yeah. is, I guess, a whole other thing. Like, so far, we haven't been able to clone adults. You, can, you can't clone you now. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I can if you watch my YouTube channel. Well, but uh, do you have? did you bring a clone with you? Uh, yes. I have several, actually. Where? Well, they're, they're hiding because I don't, I don't want anyone to know. I don't want the government to know that I can do this, uh, you know. Okay, so you just keep it on, your, on the down low yeah. on your channel. That's right. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, you're not always going to get that same person. Mm -hmm. But since we started talking about humans, I think we should stop here and we'll pick it up again tomorrow. We'll talk about the ethics of humans and cloning. Mm -hmm. But if you want to find more Craig, where can they find you? You can find me on a YouTube channel called Wheezy Waiter, where I and my clones uh, cause havoc mm. on the world. You, would you say you wreak havoc or you just cause the havoc? Well, I didn't know I was going to say havoc when I said cause, and then I should have said wreak. We wreak havoc. Yeah. You do both. We do both. We do a lot of things. Sometimes you're wreaking it. Sometimes you're just influencing the world and the havoc happens. Yes, exactly. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. So you can find them over there. You can also subscribe here on Test Tube Plus. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, one last question, Craig. If you could bring back one person from history, who would you bring back in clone baby form? Abraham Lincoln. Baby Abraham Lincoln. But I would modify it so that as a baby, he had a beard Ooh. as well. Mm. Baby Ham Lincoln. Baby Ham Lincoln. And that would be his name. I like it. Which would be weird when he became an adult. He but could change it. He, yeah, he could change it. I'm not going to change it. No. Uh, baby, I would raise Baby Ham Lincoln. That's pretty awesome. And based on his beard, of course. Yes. He could be on your channel. Yeah, I mean, also he was a great president, but, but mainly the beard. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time on Test Tube Plus.